Isaiah 62, and I'll read the first five verses. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Well, this is a wonderful uh, prayer for the establishment of Zion, for Jerusalem, uh, God's holy city. Although it's not just a prayer, the the first five verses that we just read are Isaiah's prayer, but then uh, the rest of the chapter really um, switches to God's perspective. And obviously there's lots in this uh, chapter that's rooted in history about the re-establishment of Jerusalem, the physical city, after the uh, exile. So there's language about walls and watchmen. But the vision opens up to consider Zion as that end time city of God. And so uh, newness is a theme uh, in this uh, chapter. So verse 2, Jerusalem will be called by a new name. It's a wonderful vision of uh, the end and it's a wonderful uh, completion. We've still got a few chapters to go, but it's a wonderful completion of Isaiah's um, uh, uh, book, really, when we, we started with the problem of Jerusalem. Uh, this city that was meant to be holy was uh, unrighteous. And so uh, wonderfully, I think the whole the whole book uh, holds together as uh, we see the kind of plight of Jerusalem. And then we see this kind of prayer and, and God answering it uh, at the end of the book. So verses 1 to 5 is Isaiah's prayer. Uh, and his prayer is that Zion's righteousness uh, would shine forth. Uh, this idea that... Um, God uh, um, would uh, establish and do for Jerusalem uh, what he has promised. And you can see the boldness in Isaiah's prayer in verse 1. I will not keep silent. I will not be quiet uh, until her righteousness um, goes forth in brightness and salvation uh, comes. And more than that, that she would be seen by the nations. Uh, Verse 2, the nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you can see, is the you're there talking about Zion or is it talking about God? And I think the point is, it's talking about both. The the establishment of Zion will bring glory uh, to God. Uh, Although, uh, having just said that, the second half of verse 2 does seem to be talking about Zion. Uh, You should be called by a new name that the the mouth of the Lord uh, will give. And then this um, um, glory, verse 3, though, uh, will bring glory to God. Uh, uh, Zion will be a crown of beauty in the hand of uh, the Lord. And... um, so the glory of Zion will reflect back in glory to God. And uh, that language of crying is really interesting because Paul will talk about um, his uh, uh, converts, his churches, as a, uh, as, as a crying before God. You're, unf- inf- my, you're my unfading joy and crying. And so um, what, what we see here kind of between God and Zion, I think, has uh, this fulfillment in uh, the, the gospel worker with the people that they're working for. Uh, they want to see them uh, flourish uh, to bring glory uh, to God. And then verses 4 to 5 are really interesting, and they uh, remind me of the language in Hosea. God's people were forsaken. They're, they're no longer forsaken. And these, these name changes, rather than forsaken and desolate, uh, they'll be called, My delight is in her, and married. And uh, this idea of God being married uh, to her, Uh, his people again wonderfully picked up in the new testament uh, with uh, jesus and uh, the church so this wonderful picture of uh uh uh, of jerusalem being uh established and uh, given a new name and giving glory to god uh, as a bride gives glory uh, to her husband but really the the rest of the chapter um in, in a sense uh 
escalate that uh, because it's not just Isaiah praying. It's, it's God uh, telling Isaiah to pray. pray. It's, it's really interesting for a six. Um, uh, you know, God has uh, established watchmen at Jerusalem. And then he says, um, uh, you who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. It's amazing that uh, God is saying uh, to Isaiah, to others in Jerusalem, uh, give me no rest until I establish uh, Jerusalem and uh, make it the praise uh, in the earth. Uh, bold uh, prayers. Again, uh, when we think about it, uh, we're not uh, praying for the establishment of uh earthly Jerusalem. We're praying for the establishment of Zion, God's holy city, uh, made up of people from uh, all nations. So this is a uh, for us a reminder to be bold in our prayers uh, for the spread of the gospel, to give God no rest until the, the gospel spreads a- around the world and uh, men and women are brought into right relationship with him, uh, giving glory to him. Uh, verses 8 to 9, Uh, God underlines his commitment to protect his people. Verse 8, he's sworn by his right hand, by his mighty one, I will not again give your grain to be uh, food for your enemies. Um, A foreigner shall not drink your wine for which you have labored, uh, but those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And those who who gather it shall drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Again, this idea, uh, God will no longer forsake his people. Uh, They will uh, feast Uh, in this kind of messianic banquet. So again, we're seeing um, this is more than just the establishment of Jerusalem after the exile. This is this end time establishment of Zion, God's uh, holy city made up of Jew and uh, Gentile. And then verses 10 to 12 is a proclamation of uh, pilgrimage uh, to Zion, calling the people to uh, 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 follow the highway uh, back uh, to Zion. Uh, And again, interestingly, it's proclaimed, this uh, proclamation is for the ends of the earth, uh, verse 11. Uh, Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation uh, comes. Behold, his reward is with him. Uh, Very much uh, tied in the New Testament to the coming of the Lord Jesus to bring salvation uh, to God's people. um, But obviously widened out uh, to uh, not just um, Israel and Jewish people, but to, uh, to the whole world. And then this wonderful picture at the end, verse 12, and they should be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you should be called sought out, a city not forsaken. This wonderful name change, this wonderful status change uh, that God uh, will establish his people uh, forever. So this chapter, uh, uh, Isaiah uh, prompts us to uh, pray boldly for, for the establishment of Zion. God himself uh, tells us to give ourselves no rest for the establishment of Zion. It's, it's, uh, it's a bold prayer for the spread of the gospel, for the establishment of his people. It's echoed in the Lord's Prayer uh, that Jesus uh, taught us to pray. May your kingdom come and may your will be done. Uh, why don't we pray? Our Father, we thank you for this wonderful a picture of the establishment of Zion, your holy city. Uh, we know that this prayer was answered in, in Jerusalem, returning from the exile and being reestablished, but we know that uh, it uh, is being answered fully as people are added to the heavenly city, to Zion uh, above. And we do pray, Father, that you would continue to cause the gospel to be spread uh, for men and women to turn to the Lord Jesus and to bring glory to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.